Hey everyone, it's John Isaias from The Automator, and today we're going to demonstrate a really cool script if you're considering converting a V1 script to a V2 script. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell how much time it's going to take, so we wrote a little script to give you an evaluation of how hard it's going to be. So stick around for that. Real quickly here, you know what we do here at The Automator is we're the number one trusted source for teaching people how to code in AutoHotKey. We teach them how to automate repetitive tasks, develop custom applications, adapt programs to their needs. All of our courses come with a 200% money back guarantee. So give us a thought on that. We actually have a great course on this one in this particular of painlessly learning V2 from V1, all the gotchas you want to look out for. So yeah. you might really be interested in that course. But as I just want you to show us what this script does here. Right. So Irfan was helping us out with this one. It just grabs any script that you load into this into this uh, program and it tries to figure out how difficult it would be uh, to convert now all the multipliers that we're using here are totally uh, subjective right and sure. it usually depends on your skill level but at least it gives you kind of like an idea right and and let's look at it so we were just talking recently about these win menu select items, it, it gets the information and we modified it a little bit to also kind of like give you the code so you can put it on your script to automate stuff using the menus, the window menus. It is a V1 script written a long time ago. If we drag and drop that over here, what the tool does after it says done at the bottom is that it gives you a few things that we consider and at least I, that I have converted certain several scripts, I know that GUIs are a little bit difficult, menus, DLL calls, especially. Um, there are functions that have been removed and there are functions that have been renamed. And we count those as well and tell you, hey, there's a few of them that you might want to take a look at. And then we give you kind of like a tally. So this is the count of them, how many changes you might want to take a look at. Usually we count the lines because, yeah, of course, even if it is a simple script, a 7,000 line simple script is still going to take you too much time, right? So, <laughs> it, well, it except a... for the spell check, which we said, hey, you know what? One line hot strings that don't change, those are the same. So, we right. don't it, it was like 4,000 lines of no, no changes at all. So, it, it right. takes you into perspective. It is a very big file, but you don't have to change almost anything. So, it depends. And we can, we can drop it here so we can see that too. But this one, notice that it says that it has only 159 lines. And then the other things are weighted based on what is more difficult. So, right. and, and even though there are only seven DLL calls, it has a higher value than some other things just because DLL calls are tr very, very tricky. So this script looks like a very slow, a very low score. And usually the lower the score, the better. The higher the score, the more difficult it would be to kind of like convert it. This looks like a simple script to convert. I would go ahead and take a little time one day and say, oh, let me just make this in V2. That's cool. Now, if we apply the same idea, let's take a look at other scripts we have from V1, uh, the AutoHotKey Toolkit. This script also includes other scripts. And that's something that this tool handles as well. So when I drop this here, you will notice that AutoHotKey Toolkit is the main file, still kind of analyzing, it just finished. But then after it takes into account all the other scripts, it gives you a tally of the whole thing. So this one, <laughs> it is a, a score of 10,000 yeah. uh, up, which, hey, <laughs> do you want to deal with 518 GUIs? And, and we have talked about this GUIs. It's not about the syntax changes that it has. It's the whole concept of how you approach them that changes. In V1, you have G labels. In V2, you have events. So not only the syntax varies because now it's object oriented, but also the concepts. Menus, DLL calls. Yeah, it's going to be annoying. A lot of removed functions and renamed functions. And again, this is a 5,000 line script. Now, this is the total. But I could take a look at the stats for each file. So this one in particular is just 7,000. This one here is just uh, 700. And if I take a look at them, I could guarantee, I, I myself would say, okay, I'm not going to change this to v, V2, which I definitely decided not to do a long time ago. 
But then I look at the libraries and I say, well, I could take a, a little bit of time converting this one to V2 because the library is cool because I could use it in many programs. So I could spend a little time because it's not difficult. Look at that. This is a very simple thing that it's just 23 lines long, doesn't have GUIs, doesn't have menus, doesn't have DLL calls. I might just take five minutes, 10 minutes to convert these to V2. And didn't we set it up where if you click it on the left, it'll open it? Is that right? right? If you double click on it, it opens the script. So you can take a look at it. And look at that. It's just a script that basically I could definitely use it just like that in V2. Uh, it doesn't change because I'm just using regular expression replace, which is the same. And um, the only thing that would change here is the by ref that instead of that, it would be an ampersand now. So that's what I would, uh, the very obvious change would be that. Everything else looks totally fine for me, like, except for this one, which I don't know what I did there, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but in any case, um, as you can tell, it helps you decide whether it is reasonable to spend time on something. And let's take a look at something else, like, a different script, like let's try this one. This one was something else that I tried. Again, look, in total is 700. So I would say anything below a thousand, I would consider it. Like I, I would just go, even probably if I have enough time, everything below three, four thousand, th that would definitely say I will do it. Anything above five thousand, I would say, do I have time for that? Right? Like because. It's not that you can't, it's just that it's going to take you a, a little bit of time. And anything that has a lot of DLL calls, I definitely will, won't be switching because DLL calls are so tricky that if I see like 10 or 20 of those, uh, that I, I might not even take the time to try and do that. So yeah, it's a very cool tool. This is where it's really important to realize, you know, Isaias is an advanced programmer, right? For me... I would change those numbers, the multipliers drastically, because I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm not touching a bunch of that. <laughs> the second thing to to put into you know your thought process is, it, you know, how many scripts do you have in V1 and V2? And if you only have a couple in V1, maybe you you know maybe that would change your mind of like, well, if I can convert these three scripts to V2, everything I have is in V2. Makes a lot of sense to me. But if you have like I have like over ten thousand V1 scripts on my computer. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'm, there's no way I'm converting them all. So you know what? I'm going to leave a lot of them, um, the vast majority of them, and I might convert a couple, but the majority I'm leaving. Uh, and that was right. the other one we, we talked about of, should you be using V1 or V2? And you can easily use both, right? That's another yes, thing to definitely. make sure you That's understand. That's something that you can yeah. do at any but, point. You, you, don't, you don't have yeah. to switch or convert. Now, there are reasons to convert. Like, for example, it's a tool that you use every single time. You don't want to be then figuring out that that script is not going to be supported any longer. Okay, let's go to V2. You want to learn V2. Okay, let's try converting some of them. But there are some situations, and we have been identifying those more and more, that we would definitely just tell the guy, no, just use V1. It's easier. Right. It's, it's just a simple one, matter of using. Yeah, has a, a lower learning curve. You know, the, it's not nearly as steep. But it's it's just a little simpler. Now, when you go to do advanced things, it's harder in V1 than V2. But if yeah. all you're ever going to do are hotkeys and hot strings, you stick in V1, right? Or basic yeah. GUIs. Even then, I say if you have a GUI at all, do V2, you know. <laughs> but yeah, because um, it's so once you understand objects, it's so much easier. But we, we do have courses on uh, intro to auto hockey in both V1 and in V2. So you can learn in either one of those. And then painlessly switching from V1 to V2 is a great course for you if you're interested in converting stuff. Because as AS went through and just pointed out the real gotchas that are re can be really painful. Yeah. So if you enjoyed that, please like the video. It really helps us out. Uh, like I said, also, you know, we do done for you work. So if you start doing this and you don't either know how or don't want to do it, you can hire us to do it for you. Like, that's what we do. <laughs> yeah. And awesome this day. tool, you can find it on the website. I think you can right. link to it. And uh, at the end, just go to the website. You can get it. You can test it and tell us what you think. Yeah. And subscribe if you're not a subscriber. We publish Tuesdays and Thursdays. We're the largest auto hockey channel by far out there. And we're consistently pushing videos out there. Have a great day. Bye.